In for the Night is a podcast that discusses movies, movies. random topics, and gives you an excuse, excuse to, to just, just stay, stay in, in for, for the, the night. night. Yay! We did it together. Not all the way. <laughs> I, I'm just like waiting for him. He's like eagerly staring at me and I'm like trying to do it. Trying, it's so complicated. You say it so fast. Slow down. I tried to do it in a different like tones because you cadence. were schizo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Words hurt, man. Oh, do they? You have tough, tough titanium skin. I really don't. <laughs> I'm very, very broken. This is true. You are. But that's it. Hi. But that's it. <laughs> I'm just very broken. Hi. She's Katie. And he's Tyler. <laughs> I almost said she's Tyler. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're that's gender rude. fluid here. <laughs> we are. We are. 100,000%. How's so, your week? I was like, so uh, are you going to ask me now first? Or am I, I do. How's your week? It's been long. It's only Wednesday. We're recording on a Wednesday, guys, just so you know. We have to do it when we find time, and usually it's after I get off work, which is 7 o'clock my time, and I'm sleepy. Like always. She's always sleepy. But the week went well. We went to go visit your fam. We did, and it was fun. A lot of laughs and giggles. Your mom literally screamed for five minutes. Yeah, so we were surprised my mom. Uh, we almost slipped up like two or three times. Like when I was talking to her, she called me the day before we were leaving, and I was like, it almost slipped. I'm not good at lying. So luckily I kept it in. And then when we got there, we walked into the house and she was texting my brother. She was like, oh, is it only y'all two coming? Him and his wife. And he was like, yeah. So we get there and I like, he walks in. I think his wife walks in and I walk in after. And my mom like looked at me like I was a ghost and just like started screaming at the top of her lungs almost. So it was like super cute to surprise my mom. It was fun. She was definitely not ex- expecting it. And now we're going to go back to Biloxi, July 23rd, 22nd, one of those dates, for a Caribbean festival. So if y'all are interested in a Caribbean festival, go to Biloxi. Um, his brother is hosting this awesome festival. So, mm-hmm. and it's going to be really fun. There's drinks, there's entertainment, there's stuff, vendors, all sorts of stuff. Um, so definitely go. You're listening to this, so that means you can go. Yeah, right. This is so the only time. Be a fun time. This is the only time I'm expecting you not to be in for the night. So yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> go venture out and do stuff, and then you can meet us, or you don't have to if you just don't want to, because we're awful people. We are sometimes, but yeah. But I've been working. Lots and lots of meetings, lots and lots of projects, lots and lots of crap going down because we would deal with travel every day and it's been a nightmare. But how are you? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I <laughs> am peachy. Been doing this new workout. It's like four days of full body and it's going to be kind of hard because I'm like taking a break today so I can let my body like rest and stuff, but I need to still work out two more days, which is going to be damn near impossible unless i do two workouts tomorrow which i might have to do because i work a double friday double saturday and then i have to wake right back up after three hours of sleep and go back to work at 2 30 so it's gonna be a little complicated like once um we get a new shift bid i'll probably go to just doing like double double singles so two 16s and an eight hour shift and i think that just works out better because yeah it does work out better now i have like a little bit more time and um, all that good stuff. So I'm going to try to switch it. But um, just get my video game on. Playing a new game called V Rising. It just came out. For y'all gamers out there, it's a vampire game. And it's actually really, really, really freaking cool. It's like a build your base, raiding, uh, gathering resources, fighting enemies, PvP. So it's actually a pretty... And it was like very small file to download. It was only like six gigabytes. But You're there's a small like, file to download. I am a small <laughs> file because my brain is tiny. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, my gosh. So we discussed. Oh, this is something. I wasn't done yet. Um, oh, sorry. So, yeah, go check it out. It's on Steam, on computer. I don't think it's on console. I'm not sure. I think it's only on PC. But V Rising on Steam. Go check it out. It's freaking fantastic. Can, you play with, can, can people play with you? Yeah, I play with my – well, I'm not playing with my buddies yet. I joined the server, but I'm, like, learning the game. And then once I get a little bit higher level or get to a boss that I can't solo myself, then 
I'm going to join their, like, the clan that I'm supposed to be joining. They're going to help me out. So we're trying to be, like, the best rating um, clan on that server that we're on. And so far, they've been kicking ass. So um, once I join them, it would be, be another addition, and then we can just destroy people. That's the plan. But, yeah, go check it out, V Rising. It's uh, If you like vampire games, it's actually probably the best vampire game that's probably ever been made, I would say. Um, cause there's, there's a lot of perks and bosses to kill and they give you like new abilities and shit like that. So it's cool. Cool stuff. Anyway, continue. <laughs> don't talk about video games. <laughs> I like video games. That's like a passion of mine. Like I stay at home, hang out with the dogs, the wifey and play so what video you're games. saying is it gives you a reason to stay in for the night. Exactly. Besides <laughs> the podcast. So it's and awesome. Watching movies. And, um, so funny story on the way to Biloxi. We were in the airport, and we brought up another fun thing that you didn't know. Do you remember? No. So we have A&W root beer. Oh, yeah. And we have... Barks root beer. Barks. It is not Barks. I don't know. I think this is like a Mandela effect, 1,000%, because I've never heard anyone say Barks. Or like you just didn't all. pay attention because I'll tell you stuff and you're like, you never told me that. And I told you like 27 and times. And same goes for you. So any who. But uh, Barks. So everybody write in and tell him it's Barks. I think it was probably just like people would say Barks and I would just not hear the K pronunciation and think it's like bars. And maybe I just myself added a G to it. I don't know. Or maybe I just always called it root beer because I like mug root beer. Oh, that's, is, that is an option. So What's there's A and W mug the and then Bargs or Barks. Bargs. Um, even like people are like, yeah, Bargs has bite, and I'm like, I remember seeing that commercial, but like, I guess I never referenced to root beer. I don't know. I was also young and a jock, so I don't know. But apparently, it's Barks for y'all out there who maybe said it like me, because I know there had to be another person. Maybe. <laughs> no, you're just like one. the only one on the planet. <laughs> just like. Chilling, but mug. I think mugs is the or mug root beer is the better one. It's like mug, then barks, and then a and w. Then I just want to tell you, it's actually called chilled. Chilled. I'm just disagreeing with you. I was like, it's definitely not chilled because it's a B, not a C, ma'am. Uh, for mug, I don't think it's called mug, is it? It is called mug. Or how sure are you on this? I'm a thousand percent sure because I just saw someone post a picture of it. I think it was uh, my friend. Oh, okay, I can't it say is. It. Do you know what the mascot is? Mascot? Yeah. It's a root beer glass. No. With foam on it. There's an animal on it. There's an animal on it? Yeah. I don't know what that is. It's a bull. A pit bull? It's not a pit bull. What is that? Yeah, it is a pit bull. He's oh, grumpy. yeah. Duh. I should have known that. Grumpy. Um, but yeah, so we had discussions about root beer. Uh, we did. We started watching you again. We stopped and then now we watched it like a few episodes on Sunday. Yeah, we watched like four or five episodes. I think we only got one or two more to go. And then, uh, there's also, um, what's the other one I wanted? The Boys is out, new season. Oh, new season of Boys? And then Ozark. I need to, still need to finish that. And then, uh, there was another one I really wanted to watch. Um. There's so much for us to catch up on. Crap. There's Ozark U. There's another one. Um, shoot. Midnight I can't Ma- think of well, it. There's one for Midnight Mass. I think that's associated oh, with the Hell Lock House. and Key. Yeah. Uh, that was one. I wish they would come out with another uh, Haunting of Hill House or Blind Midnight Manor. Mass. Oh, is that it? That's it. But I just, it's not like as Haunting of Hill Housey or Blind mm. Manor. Is it the same chick, Love, still in it? I fucking don't know. She's a really good actress. Yeah. She has, like, the scary sad face. She has an insta-sad face. She, like, came out of nowhere, but she's pretty beast. She's mm-hmm. pretty beast. Uh, I really like her in the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Haunting Hill House, where yeah. she... Yeah, like, the bent neck lady. I can't even do it the side of my head. Yeah, because you're going to break your neck. Don't do that. I would like to keep you around for a little bit longer. Just a little bit. You just want to murder me. No, I do not. I'm not trying to go to jail for the rest of my life. Um, so today's sexy topic 
is drum roll drum roll please. independence day independence day and i found that there's a second one too for y'all that didn't know i didn't know it came out in 2016 and it's called independence day resurgence and it, i saw the trailer and it looks really freaking good so independence day 2 aliens are our friends <laughs> Uh, no. I mean, apparently there was that one video where it was saying, like, aliens were just us from the future. So. That's smart. We, like, adapted, apparently. I don't know what the hell happened to the planet, but it probably or got destroyed. Or there's lizard people around. Maybe. Maybe. Could be. Possibly. Uh, so that might be, you know what? Maybe that should be my next movie. Well, it is his choice today. It is. I'll decide at the end of the podcast. <laughs> but did you want to read it or do you want me to? Uh, Avi, me. Well, I'm just asking. Oh, v. Politely. Oh, V. Damn, two hours and 25 minutes. Yeah, it was. All right, so we got Independence Day in 1996. We have a 7 out of 10 on IMDb. We got a 67% on Rotten Potatoes. And we got a 2 out of 5 on Facebook. I don't know why that's important, but... And then 88% like this movie, Google users. And then, so, the synopsi Penis, penine. is, in the epic adventure film Independence Day, strange phenomenon, phenomenon, yeah, I think that's it, phenomenon. surface around the globe. The skies a night, terror races through the world's major cities. As these extraordinary events unfold, it becomes increasingly clear that a force of incredible magnitude has arrived. Its mission, total annihilation over the 4th of July weekend. The last hope to stop the destruction is an unlikely group of people united by fate and imaginable circumstances. Release date was July 3rd, 1996. Director is Roland Emmerich. Emmerich? Holy crap. Box <laughs> office is $817.4 million. Damn. Jesus. They it's made a lot Will of Smith money off that movie. Good Lord. Um, and then where is the – oh, it doesn't even have the – doesn't have the cast on there. So uh, we got Jeff Goldblum. We got Will Smith. We have Bill Pullman. Mm -hmm. uh, Margaret Colin. Jesus. Vivica A. Fox. Uh, Judd oh. Hirsch. And then Mary McDonald. Um, so, yeah. It uh, doesn't say oh, – okay. Yeah, I already did that. Awesome. So I'm already going to give my rating now. Ten. That is at the end. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, people know now. <laughs> um, so, oh, we forgot to mention. This, yeah. So this is our holiday special. Oh, yeah. This is our 4th of July special. So hope you enjoy it. Oh, that's why. Hey, look at that. Perfect timing. Good choice. I know you did that on purpose, but good choice. I plan. I'm a planner. Sometimes. You're not a planner at all. I am not. I like spontaneous. spontaneous. Ooh, I'm gonna spontaneous play play video games. Wee. That's that's not spontaneous. That's like a have to. If I don't play video games, I'll start getting like an itch on my neck. Do we need to put you into rehab? Probably. Yeah. Probably. So hundred percent. Diving into the movie, this long ass two hour and twenty five minute. minute. No, two hours and twenty five minutes. I just, I just said that. <laughs> Did you? Oh, I wasn't listening. Obviously. <laughs> this is what happens, people. Anyway, so the, the opening scene is on the moon, and you see the flag that America planted, and then there's footprints. I have a first question. Which is? Okay, thank you. I was like, this is a conversation. <laughs> I'm just talking to you. Obviously. Obviously. That movie, we need to watch again. That was a good movie. What? The Platform. What is that? Um, where they're in a prison and there's a platform in the middle that has food on it. Oh, and it starts, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. guy was like, obviously. I don't remember that. I just remember the platform. That was a good movie, though. It was Foreign. in, like, some language. Yeah. I can't remember. It was in English. No, it wasn't. Oh. It was dubbed in English, but it wasn't originally oh, in well, yeah. English. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the opening scene, like, first question is, are the footprints still on the moon? What footprints? From Neil Armstrong. Are they still on the moon? Yeah. I mean, I would assume they would be covered up by now. Why? 
I mean, doesn't shit hit the moon? That's why I don't know a lot about outer space. I just know it's there. I mean, I would assume it would be like something like, doesn't it get weather at the moon? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking. Well, shit, if I know, I'm not no moon expert. I'm not no moon expert. <laughs> I ain't no moon expert, girl. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, that was, so if anybody knows the answer to that. I would assume, no, they're not. But there's like, no gravity. Showing. So nothing is like. Oh, yeah, it's true. That, that was my, true. like, my, like, theory on that. Because then if. We, like, depart, which they did, and they landed here. Like, of course, weather, they have wind and stuff, but do, do they have wind on the moon? Well, there's gravity, so... There's no I mean, gravity. there's no gravity, so I would say there's no wind. But it moves around the Earth, which is dictated by the sun. But it also gets hit by meteors, so I don't think, unless a meteor, unless that, like, one area got skipped. I mean, the flag is still years. there, I guess. Is it? Wow. Oh. Unless the Russians took it down. Did you know, I, I said this to you before, but I want to say it again or ask you rather. Do you know what a Russian astronaut's called? Ah, uh, you told me this. Uh, I can't remember, but you remember you telling me this. Cosmonaut. That's the only difference. They're from Russia. Cosmonaut. You're really in the accents today. I know, right? And so as we progress with the movie and whatnot we go to the lab i guess it's a lab um and a song is playing do you remember what the song is song is playing in the lab yeah the one of the opening scenes like a like a minute in or something really yeah i don't remember it's the end of the world as we know it that's horrible foreshadowing (laughs) yeah i know right it's like hard obviously obviously (laughs) oh they um I mean, that was, like, perfect for that area because it was, like, right before the shit went down. Uh, shit was going down at that moment. And then no one knew besides select people. I like David. Go blue. I mean, it's, like, kind of, I, I don't know if you wrote this down, but skip four. But how many dumb people are in that movie? 99.9% it's like percent of them. You have these aliens that I, I like, like the comment Will Smith made before he was about to leave Vivica. He was like, they didn't drive, you know, 900 billion light years just to, you know, pick a fight. It was like, why else would they go there? Like they wouldn't go there to like coexist. That's kind of how we did it when we were exploring the earth though. People would go on land to explore and then attack things. So exactly. It's more so borderline hostile. A bit is, but that's like the way it's been all the time. Like you don't go somewhere to like kind of meet people and be like, hey, how you doing? Can I live here? Like, because Bitch, I'm going to live here whether you like it exactly. or not. It's like you take over that area. So obviously they're going to do the same shit. And then you wouldn't have this huge big mothership and then all of a sudden send out all, I think it was like probably 15, 12 to 20 little, I mean, they're not really little, but they're smaller 15, than 15 miles. 15 miles long. But like these smaller spaceships in the mothership st- strategically place them around the that earth. That's a hard word for you. It is. Strategic. Um, place it around the earth and then expect like, oh, you know, they're just going to sit here and be friends with us. Like, no. They're giving us shade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be a shit ton of shade. But it's Holy like, shade, that's freaking Batman. ridiculous. Like. If I saw that shit happen, if that shit happened right now, I'd be like, yeah, I'm out. Or I want to like start building an underground bunker or try to find some location underground, something. Like I wouldn't be like, hey, I'm going to go on top of this big ass building and like greet them. Fucking dumbasses. Well, I want to know what the end game was for that. What did they think was going to happen? They wanted to get like, they wanted to meet them and get sucked in, you know, and like, because one sign was like, take me away with you. And it's like, they're going to take you away, but they're going to fucking do experiments on you, idiot. Jesus. Oh, my God. (laughs) Seeing that part was just like, oh, these, they, like, I feel bad saying this, but not really sorry, not sorry, but they deserve to get blown the fuck up. Like those people that were on the roofs of the buildings. They were asking for, if, okay, so kind of comparing this to Arrival. Yeah. Do you remember with. See, Arrival uh, was, I can't remember her name, but Arrival was different. Rachel Adams? 
Sure. I don't care uh, her name. Somebody, well, anyway, I only watched it once, and I thought it was really good. And it I was to really watch good. I want to see it again. So I was kind of comparing that in my head. First and foremost, when the aliens arrive, before they even attack, before anything like really serious happens, they have a we- welcome wagon go up to greet. I'm doing bunny ears. You can't see me. Greet the aliens. First, my question is, who would volunteer for that, or is it assigned? Because it's It like, was probably assigned. It's military. Well, but the thing that would go through my mind is, we don't know anything about them. This is pretty much a suicide mission. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, they don't know it's a suicide mission. They're like, maybe they're friendly. There's like a 2% chance it's friendly. No, like a negative 5% chance. But they show up with light. The, the re- question that came about like around was for um, arrival, this ling- linguist was trying to communicate with the aliens and coming up with ways that they could communicate with each other. America just decides, I'm going to throw a bunch of lights on this helicopter and flash it at them. Sorry. To me, that's hostile because when anybody flashes their lights at me, I'm like, what the fuck, motherfucker? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it's like if the president's beams. listening, you dumb fuck. Um <laughs> Can you please not shoot lights at aliens? Just, just yeah. Like, FYI, just in the future, FYI. like we <laughs> learn from, we try to learn from our past, but you obviously don't. Um, sorry, I'm bitter. Can you tell? I'm bitter. You don't know. I'm optimistic, but bitter. Bitter optimistic. That's. <laughs> I just did a finger point or guns <laughs> with a face. Y'all didn't see it, but it was there. <laughs> I should just take a picture right now. Yeah. Be like, Maybe we can. Oh my god. Finger. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Finger gun it. Wait, it's not loading. It's not focusing. There. Bam. Thank you. Facebook. Facebook. Patreon. Uh, um. So that's where I am just unsure of where the logic was with that. Because you don't know how they communicate. If they don't communicate in lights, what happens if they're blind? You're pretty much showing lights to a blind person. That's yeah, true. So there was no thought in that whatsoever. And so instead of sending helicopters, which is instantly a suicide mission, they should probably thought about it maybe for two seconds. Or just not send anything. And then, I mean, and then also the guy, Jeff Goldblum, tells them, like, hey, there's a countdown. You know, obviously there's a countdown. That's usually bad news bears. Like, and so why the fuck would you try to go greet them? Well, they didn't know it was a countdown at the time because they didn't li- like uh, David just figured it out and he was going to see. Yeah, but it was like, I think around that time. It, oh, I don't know. Because the, the countdown didn't start. He was saying it was 27 minutes. But they said that he found the hidden thing within like it was like six hours or something. So so it started at six hours, but then the six hours to the time clock started from New York to D.C. because that's where his wife or ex-wife was, yeah. and so he was getting to her, and then it took him six hours to get there. I didn't look that up. I don't think he was actually on the way there at that time. I don't think he probably started making his way there until like three hours or something. Maybe, but um, but yeah continue with the questions so this is the a comment i wanted to make because i think it's pretty funny um so if ufos were like like that did come around the world not just in america because i feel like we want to be special and we just want the problems on us so we like manifest all this bullshit so if ufos like that came around the whole world I commented that world peace would happen real fucking fast because it's us against them rather than us against each other. So we would need to work together to come up with a solution. Yeah, you would hope that would be the case, but... But men are running most of the world. So, yeah. I think that would just give them an excuse to, like, destroy more people, you know? Just like, oh, we have this little crisis going on. Let's kind of do what we've been trying to do this whole time and screw people over, and then then we can try to take care of the alien type thing. So then once the virus, jumping like way ahead, once the virus was put into the mothership and then America blasted the shit out of that ship that was there, which is only 
they had what? F- how many around there? How around the world that were fifteen miles long? I want to say it was fifteen. For That's some what I remember. But popping I in my head. So I know it was fifteen miles long, but they had fifteen fifteen mile long ships all yeah. over the world. And so, what was my point? Crap, mm-hmm. can't remember. But they had them all over the world. And so, if we were to blow it up and then not communicate to other others, would they be affected? Would they still be around just because the mothership was sick and we blew up the mother- mothership, but they did that didn't blow up the little ones? Would they disintegrate on their own, or would we still have to blow them? Well, up? it's kind of like sense? some most when you have like a uh, like a a higher up, so like, not like a god or anything. But when you have a higher up, like in a chain of command, usually mm-hmm. when you blow up the higher up person, then the other ones just kind of like dwindle away, so like they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't have any communication with the big ship, so they wouldn't have, like, any organization anymore or communication. So they would eventually just get, like, I mean, or maybe because they were pretty advanced, so maybe they might still follow, try to follow through with their end game. That's true. And then with them coming to America, my question is, were they being strategic about where they were being placed? Or yeah. was it just mostly? He said that because they sent – uh, they hit the big military and the capital, so they were mm, they they knew right. where to attack because they had that, like probably a recon- re- reconnaissance. How do you say that? That's right, you did it. That happened like forty years prior. That probably they oh, might the have 60s, had 1960s, yeah, nineteen. So they like. probably had more of them that, but they just captured that one. So they probably had you know maybe a few others escape. Go back and be like, hey, you know, this is a main area. This is a main area. This is a main area. Because he said they knew exactly where to hit. So this is to, like, let people know, maybe go to smaller, densely populated places. Mm-hmm. You may last longer. Because, like, it hit the White House. It hit, like, the big base that was in El Toro. It hit, um, where it knew El where the vice presidents were, so it hit that place. Where's I don't El, Toro? Know where El Toro? Is. Well, I think they were in L.A. for Jasmine, and then. But you said the vice presidents went to a bunker, so they hit that bunker, whatever they were at. Oh, that's true. So, yeah, the, the aliens knew exactly the big places to hit because I think there was three of them. El Toro, the White House, and, like, some other place. Well, I can't at remember. least within the United States. Well, and Dallas had, like, a little bubble over it. And then on the map, they had a bunch of bubbles all over the world. Yeah. And so, like, Paris they, definitely They mostly London. hit every major city. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. And, like, each state, I guess, or most states. Then we move on to, okay, so the aliens are there. We realize they're not, like, nice guys. Yeah. (laughs) So they go to Area 51. The president says, there's no such thing as Area 51. And the military. The weasel. The weasel. Is that what he's called? I can't remember his name. Um, The Secretary of Defense, the weasel. Um, He was like, yeah, actually, Mr. President. And they show up. And the president says, why wasn't I told about this place? Plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is bliss. What does plausible deniability mean anyway? That you, like, if you don't know about something, you can be like, that never existed. I don't know that. Like, that didn't happen kind of thing because you don't know. Like, you're not 100% sure. There might be whispers. There might be stories. But. So, like, why? So, like, just in case the president got kidnapped or something? Just in case people why? blamed the president for things that were happening. Mm. And it's, I don't know, just, it is what it is. But like, I like how, well, I mean, I guess he's a secretary of defense, so I guess he needs to know that type of stuff, I would assume. But you would think the president would know as well. So there's a thing, there's conspiracy theories across. That's going to be one of my topics eventually, that the president knows a lot more than they let on. So there's, I think, something called a black book. I think it is. Anyway, it's secrets from the past presidents, like, handed off to the new president. And then mm-hmm. the pr- new president reads over it, and they learn about all this stuff. And usually, like, you after the president's sworn in on January 20th, I believe it is, um, they, like, you don't really see them for a few days after because it's, like, shocking what, like, they learn or something. Mm-hmm. And so that's why the conspiracy kind of continues to breed is because... 
the president learns about all this bullshit that we're just like stories or things you're like, oh, that can't be possibly true. And then all of a sudden it's really true and there's proof and evidence and like the book is huge and it's supposed to have like pictures and shit. Kind mm-hmm. of like uh, Men in Black where they had pictures of aliens and shit. Yeah. And so it's kind of stuff like that. And so it, it covers a lot of different things, like things that were whispers but are actually true, like Elvis is alive and blah, 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 like stuff like that. When was Elvis born? I don't know. I would say if it's been more than 100 years, he's definitely not alive. And that's it's not 100 years. He was like popular in the 50s. Well, I don't freaking know. I don't follow Elvis. I'm saying if it's more than 100 years. <laughs> But anyway, so that's where I was thinking there's – I don't remember what it's called, but there is something that the president's – well, maybe, maybe not. Stories are true, if not. if I hope they are because it would be more interesting, and then I want to be president. I can now because uh, I'm 35. No. Yeah. Uh, no. I would do better. It was like my comment that I posted on Facebook earlier. It was like – like I said on there, our – basically our government is jacked up already, mm. and – Even if we got a president that was actually willing to make a change and do right for the people, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter or they couldn't because they're not pulling the strings. Like they're not the head honcho. It's It's someone else who's in the shadows that we don't know about, even though we probably do know. But it's like the like they're they're just a puppet figurehead. That's what it's called. Figurehead. They're just the, the face of the they're the face of the bigger plan that we can't see type thing. So Whether they like it or not. Yep. Bringing it back to the movie. So they enter Area 51 and they have, they meet the mad scientist. That's what I call them. I don't remember his name. And I just have a question. He worked there and he kind of doesn't get out much because it's obvious. And I, and he, he stays in for the night. <laughs> um, <laughs> stays in all the time. I just want to know how much night. he's getting paid. I mean, he's a scientist at Area 51. I'm pretty sure I he's just, getting a good grip of money. God damn it. I need salaries. I want, like, information on the actual person working that job, not the actor working the job, but the actual job that the actor is working Yeah, as. well, good luck finding that because it's classified, so. Uh, you know what? I just want to know. So if you work for Area 51 and you're listening to this, let me know. <laughs> you can that email will us. That never happen. <laughs> at in for the night podcast. Uh, in for the night sixty nine at gmail dot com, or just go to our website in for the night podcast dot com. That would never happen. Do it. Moving on. So I just want to make a comment since we're kind of on the mad scientists. For those who've seen this movie, which I'm pretty sure it's been a lot because it came out what freaking forever ago. It was the uh, the part where the mad scientist has the uh, the alien woke up and has its tentacle around its neck up against the glass <laughs> and the aliens making the mad scientist say let me out and like Release one of the security me. guys is what's like oh open the open the door or whatever. It's like motherfucker how dumb can you be? He's in a fog room talking super funny with a tentacle around his neck and you're like open the door like that guy should be fired on the spot that was his buddy <laughs> and <laughs> shit it's it's a it's like when your you know mom or dad or brother gets turned into a zombie are you gonna be like oh no i don't want to kill them even though they're trying they're to like, fucking eat you their arms outstretched and you're like a hug <laughs> oh hey oh you want a hug buddy you try to give them a hug and they devour your face like come on people like get 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 your brain in your fucking head. Like, obviously, the mad scientist has been taken over. Don't try to let the fucker out because you're going to let this big alien out who's armored and they're going to fuck you up. So, yeah, that was like a very stupid move. Like, open the door. I'm glad. I don't know who said wait. I think it might have been the like the uh, par- president's like, right. Yeah, the general. I think it was a general was like, no, wait. Like, they would have that idiot. <sighs> I could not believe that part. It's like that part and the people on top of the roofs were like, irk me. It's like they deserve to get shot in the head. Sorry. Are you done? I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> so before they open up the alien, I wanted to make a point and ask this because I asked it during the movie. Um, Will Smith is dragging this motherfucker across the desert and he's just like bitching at the alien and... At the end, he's like, what is that spell? And he kicks he's it. Like, ah! <laughs> and so he goes and kicks it. And then when the alien is under surgery, 
he is it smells as well and i'm just wondering is this smell standard across all aliens of this kind or is this alien just extra smelly is he like the smelly kid of the spaceship i'm pretty sure it is a because he didn't say anything when he opened up the ship and punched it he didn't say anything then i think it's like a defense mechanism it becomes like super smelly so you can kind of like a skunk like a skunk Yeah, yeah yeah exactly there you go like a skunk but i just want him to be the smelly kid or it could be a smelly kid. I don't know. I but he also went, oh, no, because when he was cutting them open. But he said, the okay, so I think the mad scientist said when they were cutting them open, he was like, oh, he's really smelly. And he's like, here's a real icky part. So mm-hmm. I think they're just all like that. Damn it. I want him to be the smelly kid. Um. So then another topic came up, Uh. why they're – attacking earth and whatnot um to use the natural resources this question i don't uh, this statement i don't understand because if they're an alien race and they have heightened like armor they have heightened intelligence they have heightened all this bullshit why would they come to america and set themselves back 50 years like using what is it called my brain's stopping uh like our natural resources like oil natural gases blah 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 why would they come here and use them? Like it doesn't make sense because they're at a heightened level. And if just to come to to America, come to the earth and just use the natural resources doesn't make sense to me because like I said, the spaceship has um, the fun armor and it X, Y, Z. I'm not even going to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. But it just kind of made, didn't make sense to me saying that because if they're going to use up all the natural resources, what are they going to use it on? They're, I mean, they still need to have everything run. But if they have spaceships that have all this extra stuff that even like the Earth has not even caught up to yet, that that's my question. What That would doesn't they... mean it's not ran on natural resources. So that gasoline? Mean that. They're going to Yeah. They're how is they supposed off? to fly through the world? They know. make they need natural resources to make whatever they need to power whatever they're using. So the shields, the the spaceship to make more spaceships. I mean, it's I not just, like they invented their own like periodic table element. They could have. They did uranium. Wait, they that's didn't. A real thing, isn't it? You know, know, the I'm only person who's ever done that is Iron Man. Like the aliens haven't done that, and that's not even real. So petroleum. Wait, that's jelly. Um. So they still need natural <laughs> resources to power their fucking that stuff that still doesn't sit right with me i don't get it i just don't it's not so that hard the, to understand so my question is earth is definitely unique in its environment ecosystem i'm trying to think of words i'm tired people i'm sorry so yeah stop licking um and so in our ecosystem we have a certain set of resources and that's where I'm just like every other planet around us doesn't have those same resources. There's possibilities, but not necessarily resources that match exactly. So I know Mars considered to have like water on Mars, like frozen water, frozen ice cubes. I don't know how they explained it, but they have water and then they have bacterium and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, it's going to be different than Earth. And so it's not going to match exactly. So if they need the exact match as Earth has, what about what happened to the other planets that don't have anything similar to ours? Well, they said when he saw his vision, they go to planet to planet, taking all the natural resources from it. And they destroy the planet. Okay. So Earth was just the next one in line. Well, that sucks. I don't know. That's just that. That's where I lay. I still, I still lay. Like I still just don't. They still need. They can only use resources that they get from the planets, babe. So, they take all the natural resources from each planet and they use it to their advantage, whatever that is. Okay, I. I It's not like they. I need a breakdown. I need to know what they're using, how they're using it. Well, that's a new movie. Maybe in the resurgence, maybe that's explained. So no, we need to watch it. Independence Day list of inventory and how it's used that's what i want thank you thank you okay they're not just going to make a movie on listed inventory i wouldn't blame it oh my god (laughs) anyway so we're moving on uh steve who is will smith decides to uh, go back and rescue his girlfriend the stripper jasmine and jasmine is with the president's wife 
and he rescues them, brings them back, and the president's wife is in the hospital. There's nothing they can do. She's going to die. And so we discuss how that super sucks for the president because the president is dealing with the alien situation and then on top of that, dealing with his wife dying. That sucks. That does hella suck. I'm surprised he just didn't like shut down and give up and be like, all right, Earth, you're on your own. And he stands or up, United flips, States, a t- on your own. flips a fucking table and he's like, fuck this shit and walks just, away. I'm out. I'm going Deuces. to a bunker and hiding. <laughs> <laughs> but we, do you remember what we said about the president yesterday? <laughs> no. You called him a DILF. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the movie. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's a bachelor. He's a hottie. And then he was like, yeah, a DILF, because technically he's a DILF. A DILF, yeah. He is a DILF. I mean, not for me. I don't want to fuck him, but. I mean. I mean. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And so we continue on where they're coming up with a solution. David gets the idea from his dad to uh, institute a virus to the aliens. And so I made the comment that, well, why do they have to, like, do anything special why don't they just get him to download porn <laughs> what would that do get a virus get it because on the computer if you download porn like it can fuck yeah but that means the aliens would have to download the porn but that was the point of me saying get them to download porn it's <laughs> funny <laughs> i mean it is but the aliens are not going to go download porn <laughs> it was a joke man come on you might be serious. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. I hate you. You suck. Uh, so, at the beginning, Steve wanted to fly a spaceship, and he got rejected from NASA. Oh, poor Steve. Um, but then, at the end, he volunteers to drive an alien spaceship. That's a mm-hmm. word. That is a word. Spaceship. Uh, an alien spaceship. And I made it, like, I wrote down, I was like, yeah, Steve's going to get in this fucking space one way or another, even if he has to hijack a fucking alien spaceship. I mean, he didn't hijack it. He got permission from the president because they're trying to set a, he hijacked the helicopter. The helilopter. Helilopter. He, and the big guy was going to shoot him. And he's like, do you really want to shoot me? Mm-hmm. And he's like, fuck. No. Just say I punched you. And he was like, okay. <laughs> you have to punch yourself in the face to make it look like I punched you. <laughs> but so then they ask everybody for pilots. And then the drunk dad that can fly a crop duster, he is still talking about <laughs> How he got abducted by aliens, and you made the comment about. Do you remember what you said? I don't understand how people don't believe him when aliens are on the planet. Right. I definitely. I didn't even think about it like that. I think it was just like a, a humorous moment in the movie, but that's really true because literally there are aliens around you, and you still don't believe this dude who says he was abducted. And they also. I mean, he wasn't in this like Area Fifty One, but and they they have a spaceship. That came 40 years prior. So obviously aliens were on the planet before. So it's pretty logical that he was abducted. But like people still don't believe him, which is like hilarious to me. So dad that killed himself to save the world. I believe you. I believe you too, my man. And way to sacrifice yourself for the world to survive. Yeah. Even though I would let it burn. You would die too, no matter what. That's fine. (laughs) We should be like, I support the dead that died. (laughs) Or like, take out all the people who... Or get a picture of his face on here in remembrance. In remembrance of the drunken dad (laughs) who crop dusted the wrong crops. All right, so... Just a couple more points that I I thought was kind of funny, but you probably won't. Um, So... uh, David goes in the spaceship with Will Smith to download the virus. Um, first, how did he download it? Wi-Fi was not invented until 1997. The movie was 1996. So. It was whatever laptop he was using. It was, I mean, that's a good point, but I don't think it needs internet connection. But you have to be connected to whatever you're about to attack. Yeah, so that's why he connected to that host. He connected to the host. I mean, he's a computer hacker, babe. Like, I don't think you have to necessarily... I don't know how all that stuff works, but 
I don't think you have to have Wi-Fi to do what he did, but maybe. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I just thought that I would have to ask someone who's like a computer whiz, like my uncle or my homeboy that I play with. But anyway, so that's that was my point. Wi-Fi was invented in 1997 for a trivia fact, so you know that now. And maybe, I mean, so for us, it was invented in 1997. But I'm pretty sure the government has devices that was able to do it before. I was watching American Horror Story the last season where the aliens come and they were talking about how they have all this technology and shit and they shared it with us to develop because it's kind of weird to think that we've been around the earth for so many centuries, but only the last hundred years we've developed so quickly. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It's weird. But anyway, at the end, everybody has a happy ending except for the president. He's still single, so he's ready to mingle. Yeah, well, his the daughter was being watched by that lady who seemed like she might have been pretty cute. So you don't really see her face, but you just like kind of see like her neck down. And that's who he's going to marry next. It's, it turns out to be actually his like mom or something. I'm <laughs> uh, pretty sure it wasn't. It looked like a pretty young woman. So I guess we already, that's it. Do you have any more points on this movie that you want to discuss? I don't have to think about it, so no. Nope. All right. So what is your score? Y'all have already heard my score. It's a 20. Oh, I thought it was a 10. No, I raised it up. <laughs> <laughs> I like this movie. It's a 10. Get over it. Why do you get to tell dictate what I want? Because you can't be like, I like this movie, but I'm only going to give it a five. I wasn't going to give it a this five. This is a classic. It's like... It is a classic. It's a Will Smith classic. It's like freaking The Mask. Like, it's a classic movie, and it's a great... I mean, obviously, the box office proved that it was a really good movie. Almost a billion dollars? Like, come on. You can't give it less than a ten. Okay, fine, 10. Are you happy? Are you happy? I am. Does that make your life so it much does. better? 1 million percent. 1 817 million percent. Okay. <laughs> so now let's move on to our topic of. Topic of the day. Topic of the day. I don't know what it is. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm glad I run this because you would not know. What to I do. have a bad. I need to write stuff down. Firework accidents. Mmm. Nice. I made sure to do the stupid ones, not the scary, sad ones, because that can get real depressing real fast. Okay, I'm reading the first one. It's longer. That's okay. Like, I don't know how to read. I didn't, I didn't actually read through all of them, but some some of them are. Okay. Right so we have, are we doing all eight? Yeah. Okay, so we got eight total. So, numero uno. In 2015, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> N.C., let's just say N.C., photojournalist Carlos Espinoza bravely filmed the explosion of a firework factory in Granada, Colombia. Five buildings that were used to store gunpowder. <laughs> Parentheses, why? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Were also set off. Evidently, the force was strong enough to knock Espinoza off his feet. Two people were reportedly injured at the time, according to... Huffing, Huffington Post, along with motor, motorist who suffered shrapnel runes while driving past the explosion. Ouch. Uh, 17 homes were also damaged, said the Associate, Associated Press. It's still unclear as to what caused the blast. Holy crap. That's pretty hardcore. And they don't even know where the blast came from. <laughs> Jesus. So not only did the fireworks factory go up in flames. Bursting flames. Uh, but the five buildings next to it that was hosting gunpowder. Well, maybe I mean, it might have been like a planned thing because uh, they knew the buildings next to it had gunpowder in them. All right, which so is stupid. But <clears throat> that 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 wasn't so funny, but it was just interesting because they were like they don't even know what happened, and it was in Colombia. And I'm just thinking cartel. I mean, I wouldn't say that on the podcast, but maybe we love you. <laughs> Some things you should not say. I'll just say them anyway. Okay. So, number two. In 2016, a dog dutifully returned a Chicago man's hand that was blown off by a firecracker. Resident Sherry Sturgigert, that's her name, had let her pup out only to see a return with not a tennis ball. The appendage belonged to a 39-year-old barber named Rafat. 
Sh- oh, I'm not going to pronounce that last name. According to Cron TV, Rafat had the equivalent of a half stick of dynamite explode near him. <laughs> Why are you playing with dynamite? You got to talk more into the mic, by the way. Why are you playing with dynamite? <clears throat> I'm trying to read it, and I have to read it over. Well, so, then you can put it right here. Fine. I'll just raise it up. No, don't raise it up. Just talk more into it. Uh, you're you're going to comment on it. I commented. Why are you playing with dynamite? Because that's fun. Wee! It's like uh, pyros. And the puppy grabbed it. I'm Like, that's weird. Oh, that's sad. You, were you not listening at all? I wasn't. I was looking at you. See, now it's way too loud. You're way too loud. Um, let's see. So, numero trace. Uh, earlier this year, a cache of 600 spark sparkers were ignited sparkers. in a tech. No, it's, it says sparkers, but there's no L Pretty in there. Sure, it was just a misspell. Um, were ignited in Texas man's in a Texas man's truck. Uh, Hurura Hassan was in a parking lot showing friends all of the fireworks he planned to light at the at midnight. When someone lit a rocket nearby, reported WDRB. That's interesting. The car only sustained minor paint damage and a video of an accident went viral on Facebook. So all in all, a pretty good night. <laughs> so his car bursted with fireworks. But only paint damage happened, which is kind of weird. I mean, that's lucky for him. Well, I mean, it's only sparklers, though. Sparklers aren't really that, like, hardcore. Now, if it would have been, like... I don't know. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's like cat, cat, cat bomb or cat. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't remember. Cat something. I don't know. Someone will probably tell me. Like, Those big ones, they have like the godfather ones, yeah. which are crazy. And if it was one of those, then I'm pretty sure that damn thing would have blown, blown up. We fireworks that we need to let. Like, we bought them last year in the hopes of. Well, we're going to pop them this year. Even though I'm, I mean, I'm off on July, but I got to work like the next day. July 4th you have off? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were working. In Tulsa, I don't, it's not the line, babe, so I have holidays uh, off. That's nice. So, number four. A rogue firework grazed the butt of a NASCAR Xfinity Series driver, Austin Dillon, at a North Carolina ri- race in 2015. According to Joel Panick, uh, Dillon's ass got singed <laughs> as the explosive fell from the sky. The car was okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so a NASCAR driver's ass got burned. Sorry, there's a lot of random words in here I was trying to read without messing up. So five and six. Actually, there's only seven because there. This one goes together. It didn't. It didn't. Which copyright. one goes together? Oh, Number five, five and six. Yeah. Okay. So numero cinco. Uh, San Diego fireworks show exploded in 15 seconds, ruining show. <laughs> Or the former Disney World performer. Jesus, that's kind of rough. Did anyone get hurt? I, I don't think so. I think they just all exploded at the same time rather than... Oh, going, like going one, one at a time? At, like, oh, oh, I'm sure that was a dope show, though. It was very lit. Like, it was daylight and then a dark. And then dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wah, wah, wah. So, numero siete. Um... Six. It says, no, seven. Oh, yeah, well, six. Yeah, yeah, It says, or in 2011. I think that's supposed to, I don't know if that's. I think it's some, it copied funny, and I was trying to make it fit on one page. So in 2011, when Jesse William Burley of Fargo, North Dakota, attempted to light a firework mo- mortar similar to the ones you see in commercial fireworks displays big, and it didn't detonate and take. And it didn't detonate and take off. He decided to look down. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) How dumb can you be? Jesus. He decided to look down the barrel and find out what went wrong. Unfortunately, the device blew up and took his head with it. Oh, my God. Emergency officials say the neighbors witnessed whole grisly event. Oh, Jesus. 
Okay, okay, that one's rough. So, guys, don't look down the barrel. Just don't. If a firework does not go off, do not look down the barrel. <laughs> or do not put your head directly over the firework. Just kind of, you know, leave the firework in open area. So, if it does go off, delayed, which can happen quite often, your head won't go with it. Or your fingers, or your hand, or your limb, or your private part if you're standing over it like a dumbass. Don't stand over it. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, take video, please. Thanks. Yeah, please do. Thanks. All right. Last but not least, um, in Greece, uh, where to commemorate ancient Olympic, Olympic battles, residents of one neighborhood compete in firework, fireworks war. Oh, my God. I'm struggling. Or as it's known, the rocket war. The goal? To hit and ring the church bell in the other guy's neighborhood. Sometimes the chicken wire and the mesh they put up doesn't always protect surrounding homes. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure the houses blew up. Yeah, some houses that, got destroyed. You know those Roman candle yeah. wars that people like shoot at each other? Mm-hmm. Don't fucking do that. I mean, so many young people come up with some dumb shit. It's like... um. The only time I played with Roman candles was when we were trying to be Harry Potter and we were shooting it up in the air. We were adorable. Yeah, shoot it up in the air, not at each other. It was like when it was like some meme thing came on where like people were drinking something or whippets, as they call it. Mm. Like, um, oh, yeah. Uh, the fucking the things you clean laptops with. Yeah. Flip it upside down. They're yeah. like inhaling it. A lot of people died from that. So And the same with Tide Pods. People got poisoned. Oh, yeah. Tide Pod things. Just stop doing stupid it's shit. Like, yeah. Stop doing stupid shit. Become famous. Like, do something different. Like, Change the use world. your fucking brain, people. Come on. Uh, so please, please be safe on this 4th of July holiday. If you're going to celebrate, don't be dumb. If you're going to drink, do it safely. Don't and play remember, with Remember, do not put your head over the firework or your hand or any other limbs. You know, leave space just in case there's a delayed reaction that the firework can still go off and not take anyone out. And also, just because it's sitting flat on the ground does not mean that motherfucker can't go at an angle. So definitely leave yourself some space between the Hide firework behind a rock. and yourself. Yes, and get distance. So if you have like a big firework going off, please get behind something. And don't do it near power lines. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we should need to say that, but good Lord. Yes, do not do it near power lines because you're going to lose electricity and also it could... The respect of your neighbors. And, yeah, and you don't want to be out of electricity because that's just bad news bear, especially with it being so hot or if it's cold near you need heat. So yeah, just be smart people. Try to be and logical and have common fucking sense. I'm off my soapbox again. You have a lot of soapboxes today. It's one of those days. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to complain about? Uh, no, it should be good. Yeah, it should be good. Great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just don't be fucking stupid. Okay. okay. <laughs> I guess we're done. So uh, that is our show today. Uh, uh, again, oh, Independence Day. If you haven't watched it yet and you want to watch it, we did actually find it for free on Amazon Prime or the Amazon app or whatever it's called. Amazon? Amazon Prime. Yeah. And so if you have that, definitely there. Um, but it is free on Tubi as well. But Tubi is... Uh, commercials it, it has commercials so if you don't mind the commercials that's totally fine it gives you a bathroom break so you can get up and go potty or grab get a drink. beverage or food so definitely do that um let's talk about what's next what is our next movie ty gets to choose the movie now because he was complaining um so oh, damn it i really want to watch a new independence day but i've had a couple of buddies at work that gave me some movie choices that they wanted me to watch we don't have to watch them for the podcast but wifey said she saw one of these and one of them was requested so anyway it's the curious life curious case curious case of benjamin button i would say will be the next movie uh um, oh, we didn't even see where it's from where we can watch it yeah we have not looked up where we can see it i know it before. i think you know what no, no no i saw it on a. I saw it on something because that's what made me remember the name of it. You can watch it on Pluto TV for free. And it might it's probably on Redbox too, I would assume, but Definitely on Red like everything's on Redbox, it's just you have to pay for it to Yeah, you got to it's like 3.99 to but up it's to on 5.99 Pluto TV or so you can watch it there. 
Um, so my topic, I have been recently diving into anime again, and I watched Naruto. I need to watch Naruto Shibundo, how you pronounce it. And you also, also need to watch that I know, one that I suggested. I know, I know. But anyway, so right name? now I'm, no, I don't. Oh. Um, right now um, I'm watching the Avatar, The Last Airbender, and the cartoon, of course, because it's Nickelodeon. Um, and so my topic pertains to that. If you could control one element, what would you do and why? Mm, that's a good one. That's a fun one. I thought that's that was fun. fun. One. So those are our topics for next week. Uh, make sure you do the homework, watch the movie, think about what to- uh, element. What are the, Do you know what the four elements are? Earth, wind, fire, and water. Yep. So which element uh, would you control or be a bender? Because that's what they are. Mm-hmm. And so um, if you want to write to us, uh, the advice, we're not qualified episode where we give our unsolicited advice um, to you is coming up. So you can write your advice questions to us at inforthenight69 at gmail.com. Or you can go onto our website at inforthenightpodcast.com and just click on contact and you can just literally type it out and tell us there. Um, Please put the subject as advice so that we can filter through. Um, you can also buy merchandise from us. We have some cool slips, which I want to get soon. Oh, I want to get those hundred mm-hmm. percent. And then we have different, I'm going to start creating some more. Like I really do want the um, United States one with Alaska on the bottom. We need that one. I want to sure. make that like super soon. So that might be coming up and I think it'll be really fun. Um, so that is what's there. Also, if you really like the show and you want to become a Patreon, definitely go there. You can go to our Patreon. It is connected to our website and you can donate. We have different tiers. You get different shit when you donate and just be your all around awesome person. Um, and whenever you donate, we will feed our animals treats. And that's always fun to watch because they're fat. Some of them. And we have a puppy who's huge now. We I took him to the vet yesterday, and he is, he is seven months, seven months old, and he is forty eight pounds already, probably fifty pounds. So he's huge. Like his paws, he, he's his still paws growing. are still big. So I think he's still growing into them. So he's probably going to be, I would assume, maybe sixty, sixty five, seventy pounds. I would think, um, unless he stops growing, he just has big ass paws. I don't know, but we'll see. But, but yeah. Uh, Patreon and uh, 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 oh, merchandise, you know, um, definitely good things to do. Uh, we will start posting stuff to our Patreon page. Yeah, I do. I do. Oh, well, wifey does. So we're going to start doing more because I'm not on there yet. So we'll start doing that. So there will be more stuff to see on there. Yeah. Uh, pictures videos our next video i really want to do the tortilla slapping one where you drink some water and you slap each other with yeah. like do rock paper scissors and i'm down we just have to do that outside and hopefully not <laughs> extremely hot but yeah we'll do that so definitely take a look at that page and the merchandise we're going to add some more stuff like wifey said um so if you want to participate in those fun shenanigans then do it to it yeah, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and we gave you a reason to stay in for the night. Have an awesome week and we'll get back at you next week. Until next time, peeps. Peace out. Every time.